So this is the new eight One thing minute I have interview piece about between me, God and my wife is that I was the best husband I could possibly be. And if I went to do it over again, I don't think I could have done any better. And so because of that, in the midst of all this war and chaos, I have great huh. peace in that area. He just went like this. He's talking and his his eye contact is down to the side. And then when he's talking, he goes, he does like a roller coaster with his eyes. He goes up and over the person that he's talking to. He keeps talking and he's going like this and then stops, goes forward for a second. You can tell he doesn't have eye contact with the person that he's talking to because his eye isn't at a level where you're sitting in front of somebody. His eye contact is more down a little bit like he's looking at their right shoulder kind of thing uh, yeah I, I also got kind of get the impression he's he's memorized a bit of that um that's why he's kind of swaying his head as well he's just trying to remember remember the script that he, that's been told many times yeah so that way it doesn't yeah. seem odd again the next no eye contact okay and of course micah's family has declined it because the sun news is just pushing one narrative he had to have memorized it jc it's you're telling people over and over and over this is john paul she didn't have any mental health issues family said she didn't have any mental health issues until first why I, she I, got I married to him sunday morning why i would get up and preach after my wife passed away the night before or the day before eye contact and, um, where's it at I, I don't know if anyone has ever taken any um psychology classes that could help me understand um exactly what i should have done yeah. you know you spend uh, seven years trying to keep somebody alive with medicine and um their family convinces them to stop taking the medicine and so then you spend three months every single day for three months doing whatever you can to keep her alive, whether it's going to family, friends, her pastor, her counselor, um, policemen, judges, doctors. I did everything I could, lawyers, whatever I could to get her her medicine and help her take it. And um, she would not um, take her medicine because her family didn't want her to. And so in that moment when I got the phone call, it was late Saturday night. Um, I felt like the world's biggest failure in my life is, as I knew it was over completely and my worst fear had come upon me. And um, 10 hours later, I was supposed to preach, and I didn't know what the right thing to do was. I didn't know if I stay at home, I, I might kill myself. If I um, sit at home by myself, I might be depressed. If I go off with a friend, I, what do I do? Do I go to a bar and drink? I don't know. Do I get on my knees? And You're a pastor, dude. Do, do, do I go to a bar and drink? So I went with my natural instinct was just to get up and work. And um, if Micah were there, she would have wanted me to do that uh, with all of her heart. And so I just went with what was natural, and I preached. And at the end... I made the announcement. I don't know the right way to make an announcement like that. I don't know what you're supposed to say, what you're not supposed to say. Um, if I could go back and do it again, I guess I would have asked more people how I should announce it. Uh, I said what I said because I didn't want anyone to speak negatively about her or anything uh, in my presence. That's one reason I told them to please be quiet. Go talk to Jesus about it and then you know, process it with Jesus and then discuss it. No Jesus eye contact. Things isn't the best. And... Um, and I didn't know any other way to say it. I just, I, I feel like no matter what I said, it would have been criticized in some way or another. No eye contact again, except for a couple moments in the very beginning of that ramble. What a ramble! Just blah 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 blah. But yeah. go ahead. Sorry. No, I just wanted to ask: Do you think that the the comment about the person who took psychology classes is a weird like? really condescending thing to say like almost like you guys don't have the right to have an opinion like, yeah like <sighs> yeah like uh you know i don't know if you know anything about it this is what was what was odd too is when he said i tried for seven years perfect record people i've tried for seven years to for to get her medicine to help her where's the record of her having to take medication prescribed seven years ago bro 
when you got married. Right? If you just said it yourself, seven years, I was trying to help her get better from med, you know, with medicine. Well, then where's the prescription bottle from seven years ago, not seven months ago? Because if you've been trying, you might you might have just admitted. Because if you ain't got a prescription for it, you might have just admitted to making her take substances she didn't need. Where's the prescription bottle from seven years ago? Where's the medical report that shows what was being uh, prescribed seven years ago? Because if you don't have that, that shows you were truly forcing her to take substances to help her get better without a prescription. And that's not good. That's not good. Right? Right, Charity? He just said it right here. Seven years. Seven years. I was trying to. Okay. Where's that at? Let's see. Is that one of the 350 pieces? I hope it is. I'd like to see that. Oh, yeah. Another thing. Yeah, when you have church members that are lawyers, judges, doctors, all of these people that you just mentioned, I tried to have cops and doctors and judges and lawyers try and help her. Yeah, you tried, right? You tried to, hey, you don't need to go see that facility. You need to go see this one, right? Mr. Randall and his daughter. Yeah. Hey, guess what? Micah don't think, remember what he said in the uh, another video? Hey, people that are sick, they don't they don't think they're sick. They need people to tell them that they're sick. Micah's telling them, I don't need this. I'm not sick. Hey, judge. Hey, doctor. Hey, lawyer. Micah's sick. She don't think she needs it. That's what they do, right? He just preached it to everybody else. You don't think he was, come on. Yeah, you weren't trying to have doctors and lawyers and judges help. You were trying to use whatever you could to force the freaking medicine on her. All the crazy medicine that you were naming in video three. It's not. Mm. Wow, this is a crazy, this is a crazy freaking interview. I'm glad yeah. that, I'm glad he sat down and did it because, uh, but. You know, it's the Sun News. Of course, they're going to have special access. There's that door that you can come in if you go through the front door. See? Where? Right there. I always wondered where that door was at. Right here. Oh. Right in the middle, right back behind his head. I always wondered where the front door came in. All right. Please hit the like if you haven't yet. It is the freeway. We're going to get into the rest of this. There's still another six minutes. Why did my wife take her own life? Well, the last time I saw her, last time I saw her, she said a lot of things. One of the last things she said to me was, she says, I want to come home, um, but my family won't let me. And I said, well, maybe you can come home. They'll be, she said, nope, they'll never talk to me again if I come home. If I take my medicine, my dad will be disappointed in me. I said, baby, I said, who cares about any of them? What do you think God wants you to do? And when I said that, she showed me this book she was reading called, I Love Jesus, But I Want to Die. And I said to her, I said, why do you want to die? She said, I want to die because I can't come home, sleep in my bed. And she Thug said, I want to do that. And um, me in a way makes me want to die. It makes me it makes me wonder, did you ask the Sun News to get a shot of the tattoos on your hands? Probably. You know, because it's always about showing it off. Yeah, the, the family uh, was was reaching out to that here's the thing and and michael had left a message after remember when we went through those text messages from jp that was showing uh the dialogue between you know how he sent out the reminder for the the doctor appointment and they were you know in their response uh 
Michael even reached out and left a message and said, there's a lot more context to what happened in those messages. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that wasn't shown. And I told him, I, and, and, and you could even see it. I even told you guys on the show, like, there, it's obvious that stuff was cut out and missing because when we were reading one of the first screenshots of it, you could see that the, the rest of what was written was cut off. And then you go to the next photo and it wasn't there. Like the part of that conversation that was cut off, then it goes to something else. So you already knew something was missing in the middle. It was, it, you know, so it was one of these things like, yeah, it's, it's a narrative, you know? Yeah, right. of course. Right. It's a narrative. This right here though. Um, I don't know. This is, this I'm surprised he sat down and did this. Honestly, I don't. Cause man, you're not looking very good. It's like when Chris Watts was doing his interview in the front porch uh, of their house, trying to look like a concerned husband, uh, but he was acting so sketch as hell too. This guy itches his nose. Itches his nose, looks around when he's talking. He's just rambling and then looking down at the bottom left. Uh, usually there's eye contact. And when you're talking about, you know, if this really affects you that much, you're getting emotional. I don't see any emotion in those eyes whatsoever. No. I don't. I haven't seen it yet. Not even the fake stuff that you do in front of a, a, a church service. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking, I've, I mean, I've seen him do a little bit of a better, I don't want to say performance, but performance yeah. when, he, when he's preaching. I mean. That's what it is. Like, yeah. I mean, it is. Whether it's, whether it's a... I mean, it all is a performance. Even when you, you think about it, like even with what we do, we're behind a camera, we're behind yeah. a microphone. Yeah, it's you. It, it's a performance no matter what, whether it's good intentions or bad intentions, that depends on the soul of where the performance is coming from. But it's all a performance. Like, you know, like when we do our shows, we have to pretend like... Um, you know, a, a, a family member didn't pass or or yeah. we didn't get a flat tire or, uh, you know, we don't feel good or whatever. You know, it, it's one of those things where you just, you know, there's there's it's, it's for what we're doing, you know. Um, so I'm surprised I'm surprised there's not any kind of performance when it comes to this because uh this is a sit down you've already said some really in you know like really some some stuff with some words with a lot of energy behind it which usually then triggers emotions because that we're, that's what we're made out of we're emotional creatures it's gonna trigger emotions and i haven't seen any emotions being triggered it just looks like I'm going through the same thing over and over and over. Right. It's bizarre, right? He's not even pretending to have emotion at all. Yeah. That too, Tara. You know? Yeah. Age 14. You know what I'm saying? I was having conversations with one of the neighbors that lives across the street um, after the protest. And I was telling her about some of that, you know, some of the stuff that Allie was, uh, you know, what Allie was claiming in court documents. And she was like, she didn't know about the, the, the 14, the 14, you know, babysitter thing. Um, but she had heard all the other stuff and she was just like, oh my gosh. My church was going to buy that solid rock church building when they were going to build their huge, you know. Really? Yeah. She said, oh my gosh. A performer. Well, it, it is weird. There's there's no emotion that's being triggered. So, I don't know. 
you would think though it's it seems like an intimate setting it's it's you you got a female this is what's crazy is is it's a female but the it was a guy from the sun news so the girl that was in the red car must have been the lady that came to do this interview then and then the guy that was there out there during the protest is the one that is taking the video then. okay all right yeah that's why they were both there right i didn't know why that lady in the red car i thought she was part of the church but because she looked like she was dressed up for church um so i just thought it was somebody from the church but i guess it's part of the sun news all right back to this this video i said a lot of things one of the last things she said to me was she says i want to come home um but my family won't let me and i said well Maybe you can come home. They'll be, she said, no, they'll never talk to me again if I come home. If I take my medicine, my dad will be disappointed in me. I said, baby, I said, who cares about any of them? What do you think God wants you to do? And when I said that, she showed me this book she was reading called, I Love Jesus, But I Want to Die. And I said to her, I said, why do you want to die? She said, I want to die because I can't come home, sleep in my bed. And Tattoo she said, I want to do that. And um, being away makes me want to die. What happens is she gets this mind, she gets this thought, and the thought stays in her mind, but her mood changes. It's a very unusual thing with schizophrenia, and bipolar one and bipolar two all together. And so when she gets to this point of um, like suicidal, she gets to a euphoric state and thinks, well, this is a great idea. Huh. That's why if you look at the Dick's Pawn Shop video, she's smiling. So if it's any, um, if it helps anyone, with you know thinking she was hurt or depressed or this was her only way out that wasn't her thought she was in the euphoric state thinking this is a this is what i'm supposed to do it's a great idea you know it's a good thing and um that's not when she called 911 it sounded like she was ordering a pizza because she wasn't you know in great fear or torment or i'm so depressed and all these kind of things so my thought is a few weeks before we got together and she was talking about how she wanted to die because she doesn't want to she can't come home because her family won't let her that mindset i believe stayed with her until her her schizophrenia you know kicked in and said well you should just you know harm yourself and and that's what happened okay i i remember reread an article uh just a few weeks ago rosie that was talking about how you couldn't have those two at the same time right. and episodes not even there's a different period of time between episodes and all these other things i don't know what i'm surprised he's still going on with Maybe because he said it already, he's got to double down. I I don't even know if he. I don't know. It's like he hasn't. Maybe he just hasn't done the correct research behind what he's trying to tell people. Because he, I mean, he speaks like he knows. I mean, it sounds like he knows what he's talking about, but it he it, it can't be. Like no, we we we've already read it. Uh, where was that article from? Do you remember? Um, it was some psychology website. Let me check. Right. Check. It. Uh, man, I'm trying to... I'll have to look for it later and drop it for you guys. I think we made a video about it too. That you can't have both of those at the same time. So it's like... I'm, I'm surprised like one of the doctor friends didn't reach out to him and say... Right. Hey... hey you need to, like you're already done you already done said it how about you word it a little differently next time so that, you know what i mean like right. word it a little differently next time so people don't catch on uh <laughs> crazy and he just, blah, 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 still no eye contact look at mm -hmm. around what professional treatment was micah receiving for her mental health mm, the professional treatment that is all spider webbed up in that spidey suit, right? Mm -hmm. That's why he likes the Spider Man outfit so much because it's all these spider webs that are just getting thrown all over the place. You walk into him, it's like a little bug. You walk into it and you're like, oh shit, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> and then next thing you know, that, that spider's wrapping you up. Enjoy your cocoon yikes yeah hey say cj do you think when jp was at the peach tree and i and said i will talk in a couple of weeks he wanted this interview to come out first i don't know that's a good question precious because 
when he so when he left the peach tree and he gave me the second peach so I could take it home which was a very kind gesture but gave me the second peach he got in his truck and then he turned around and then he told me because he went to shut his door opened his door back up turned around and said I'm going to have a bunch of stuff for you I'm going to have a bunch of stuff to give you in a couple weeks. And I was like, okay, I don't know what you're going to give me. I thought it was going to be maybe some of the 350 and maybe, I don't know. Um, so I don't know if it's, if it has to do with this interview. I was thinking maybe it was going to be some kind of, I don't know, 350, some of it. Uh, not sure, but when it comes to this interview, this is what I don't understand is why would this interview be coming out? What is the purpose of this interview? I don't understand that so far. Well, I, I'm kind of wondering why it came out so close to other things disappearing. Like if he's trying to cover a contradiction as well. I don't know. Well, there's a lot of contradictions on, well, that were on True Crime Rees page, and we got the screen recordings of most of them. Um, I'm just trying to, I still don't understand. Me neither. What, what the purpose of this interview was, because you're not saying anything different than you haven't said before. Um, when you, you look suspicious cause your eyes are all over the place except for where they need to be. She would have been diagnosed with that long before 23 years old, or she would have definitely showed signs of it. Right. And when I talked to them, that was one of the first questions I asked was, did she have any mental health issues before her marriage? No, none. One of his sermons on the Southern Rocky T page, he tells of his mental problems, even the doshits he takes on and on and on and on. Yeah, he even said, if you want to know about me, just listen to my sermons. He uses his own life experiences for his sermons. He just changes the names. Except for Micah's. He used Micah's name when he talked about her. Yeah. She did, didn't she, to the family. If anything happens to me, this is who did it. If anything happens to me, this is how it was done. If anything happens to me, this is the specific body part that it would happen to. She reached out to her family and told her family that. All of it. Exactly what happened. And when it comes to, this is what I don't understand, when it comes to people coming out the last couple days and how this new theory about how JP hired somebody, uh, that was a theory that was discussed over here since like the first day of it happening. Like, come on. Who drives to it? Listen, that, that's why somebody was like, somebody came up to me this weekend. They were like, how did you get into Micah's case all the way from Indiana? I said, um, well, I, w we were doing a show where we were covering different topics one day, and we came across this, and as soon as I played the first video, I was like, none of this makes sense. Yeah. The 911 call, the fact that you're going to North Carolina if you want your family to find you. You're going to North Carolina Somewhere where you don't even know. Um, I think Fair Bluff. Somewhere where you don't even know. So your family can find you. And you're driving your godmother slash roommate slash friend's vehicle to go do it. None of it made sense whatsoever. The fact that you were dressed for work. Yeah. Why would you get dressed for work? Like, there's so many things, and it's like, oh, yeah, there's this new theory the last 
couple days and how they could have hot man come on that was something that you should have been thinking about from the very beginning if you have that mind about stuff like this if you have that mental approach that's something that enters your your brain asap because none of it made sense none of it whatsoever you couldn't have like there wasn't like one direction where you're like well four out of five makes sense but for some reason this one you didn't even have that you had all five the evidence the route how when where all five of them none of it made sense and when you want to yeah when somebody's i'm at a soccer game it's called creating an alibi. Is this the first crime anybody's ever heard of where somebody was at a different place when the something happened to their spouse? Watch watch the true crime shows. It happens quite often. It's not some new theory. Uh, it, ugh, it's just crazy. So when it comes to professional treatment, where was she getting her professional treatment? You see where she was getting her professional treatment. You see who was connected to the professional treatment, Mr. Randall and daughter. You see all the influence. He's talking judges. He's talking cops. He's talking lawyers. They all were trying to get her to take that medicine. And then when you, the whole Randall setup where they had Micah meet at a Walmart so then they can all bum rush her to force her to get admitted to a mental health facility at the end. Man, if she did have a book that talked about loving Jesus but wanting to pass, because she felt, probably she felt like she couldn't get out. You have... Like, everybody around you, you couldn't talk to your family because then that created more issues. Like, think about abusive situations and people in abusive relationships. They cut off their family because the abuse gets worse when they have contact with people that they love, right? Because the people that they love, that's who they're going to tell what, what's going on. So the abuser automatically makes, makes them do that. So she's already alone with her fan. She can't talk to her family. She can't talk to any of the friends or any of the church members because they all think that she's freaking mentally sick because they're being told, well, she doesn't know that she's sick and she's going to think that she's not sick, but she's sick. Trust me. You have all of these people just like surrounding and hounding and just you, you can't get out of that cloud of thick fog it's horrible I spy crime yeah he can't can he spy like the right this is I'm still trying to figure out why what what is the point of this interview So, on February the 6th, 5th, 5th or 6th, we were madly in love, and she left me voicemails of how much she loves me. I'm the greatest husband in the world. She went to her doctor's office, and he left them. her doctor called me and said she's having a schizophrenic episode. You need to get her to the hospital. And I said, I can't. She won't She won't go with me. And the doctor said, well, I'm going to call the sheriff. And I have Oh, my up. gosh. She out this paperwork that says she's suicidal, delusional. Oh, my um, gosh. You know, psychotic. And I sent it to her family and I said, hey, um, she's sick and she needs to go to the hospital but like she has many times before. Why don't y'all, you know, just pray with her over the phone. Maybe come give her a hug right before they pick her up. Something like that. Oh, my gosh. That's exactly what I was just saying a minute ago. Just, oh, can you imagine? Yeah. You, you can't even talk to your family, Rosie, because yeah. where are you supposed to go? Yeah, it must feel like nothing's safe. It's just. 
Karma is an mf -er, man. That's all. I, that's why I give everybody 150, because I ain't trying to have that karma come to me, because I don't want to give it back. You know, I don't want to give it back, because I'm a fighter. <laughs> I'll give it back. <laughs> I will give it back, but I don't want to. I'm not trying to be that way. You know what I mean? I'm trying to, yeah. you know, I don't want, so I don't even, if I know I give 150, hey, if that karma comes to me, then I know that I'm in the right giving the karma back. That's all. Exactly. Oh, the question is, did I ever hit or harm Micah? So not once ever, ever. Oh, looking ever, straight to the camera. Anyway. In any way was she harmed by me. Oh, like, look at that eye contact. Ever, ever, ever. ever. Look One at that eye contact. Disneyland, I think I knocked the drink um, that she was holding off. But that's the closest we ever come. Now, when she's off her meds, she's knocked the crap out of me a few times. Um, chipped my tooth, busted my nose, uh, hit me so hard in my ear. It rang for six hours and I lost hearing. But that's when she's off meds. That's when, and, and, the, and you just take care. It's like an autistic child. Whoa. Love, can't control themselves. Uh, you don't really know what to do. Do you hug them really hard and prevent them from moving their hands? Do you run in the other room? For me, I would just kind of run away. You know, I'd leave the house or I'd go lock myself in a room and try to talk, you know, talk her into understanding what's going on and who I am. And Oh, when he would steal her phone and shit. <sighs> yeah. My gosh. Now, jeez, uh, like when you listen to the sermons... Yo, it's already like, yo, what loved one or friend talks about their loved one or friend like that, let alone a pastor. Right there, the way that he said it, how he said it. Oh, my gosh. That was like, that's the worst I've ever heard him yeah. talk about Micah and her mental health right there. That's the worst I've ever heard him say. Yeah. And I mean, if you listen to like the majority of his sermons it's it's ironic because he he's so angry about people speaking about him like and then he just goes and it's it's Whoa. the word i mean it's so disloyal at yeah and he's giggling about it he's kind of blushing he's giggling and right blushing and He's turning a little pink. Oh my gosh. This is bad. This is a word. Yeah, we're, we're going to rewind it and I'm going to play it for you. I'm going to make a highlight out of this video. Um, This is nuts, man. I don't understand. I, I still don't understand what the point of this interview was because it got worse drastically right there because that's the worst I've ever heard him talk about Micah yeah uh, I'll, I'll send you my phone call with him a month and a half and he's yes please do. I would love to um, we need to have you on the show and we can do that we can listen to that how about that we have you on the show and we'll we'll listen to the phone call together and we'll go go through it together. Let me know if you'd like to. Um Oh my gosh. Okay, here it is again, you guys. This this is the worst I've ever heard him talk about her. Jeez. Oh, the question is did I ever hit or harm Micah? So, not once ever 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 in any way in any way was she harmed by me or hit by me ever, 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 ever. One time in Disneyland, I think I knocked a drink um, that she was holding off, but that's the closest we ever come. Now, when she's off her meds, she's knocked the crap out of me a few times. Um, chipped my tooth, busted my nose, uh, hit me so hard in my ear. When she's off her meds. I lost hearing, but that's when she's off And meds. giggling and, and, and smiling. And, and, and that's when she's like an smiling some more. Someone you love. And then compare an autism. Uh, you don't really know what. And then, sorry, go ahead. And compare no, no. autism. It's also, the present tense is weird. Um, you know, when she's off her meds, like that's. It doesn't sound right. It's like. No, it's. It, a, it's it a also joke. makes me think that he, you know, it's something that he's memorized because. No, I mean, you should to be make saying people think she's crazy. 
No, no, I mean, he should be saying when when she had been off her meds, but he it's did. like he he's saying say when that. she when she's off her meds, like yeah. like she's still he's saying it like she's still here because it, it it's like it's a technique that you look for when you're looking for somebody who's being deceptive. You look if they move in and out of their tenses. So when he's saying yeah. when she's off her meds, it's it's not correct because, you know, she's passed away, right? So it's something that in his head, it's not it's not really it's a repetition not... because what he's already said to the congregation. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is what what I was saying with this whole video. It's the same stuff that we've heard. It's the same story he's telling the congregation, telling people that probably don't even know the church. Yeah, my wife did this. Da, 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 da. Like it's the I'm going to ramble and continue to tell what I've been telling everybody for the last year and a half except for the part about the cell phone aliving, I'm going to continue to tell people the same thing because when I'm actually, when I'm not giving eye contact, this is how you know that that was the one real answer because he's sitting there giving you eye contact over and over going like this, this straight eye contact. When he's looking down, he's searching for the words that he had already told people before. When he's going up above somebody's head as he's looking he's now reading the sentence that he has memorized that's why he's looking from one direction to the next he's reading that sentence in his head instead of trying to find it you look down and off to the side you're trying to search you're trying to find that sentence now when you're looking around that's you following the sentence right like for the uh like what when it comes to like the the speech and um you know the telltale signs of if somebody's really telling the truth or not as much as they want to hide whatever body actions that they have there's always something that they don't even realize that they're doing that they're going to do which then tells you this person's a hot dog state yeah mm -hmm. And so it's like what you said, him saying she when she's not on her meds, like what you said, he should have said when she wasn't because it's not a current, it's a past tense. And so, you know, it's just I'm looking down, trying to find the sentence. Now, when I'm doing this with my eyes, I'm reading the sentence in my head. And then when I don't have to do any of that. And I know that I don't have to make anything up. And I know that I'm telling you the 100% truth. That's not some story. I'm going to give you the straight, straight up eye contact uh, period uh, when it comes to this. Because when he says, talking about, you know, uh, did I ever hit her? No, I never hit her. Straight duh, 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 eye contact. Then once he starts talking about the other stuff again, then he gives you a little bit, looks up a little bit, looks up a little bit, looks up. It's not the same as when he's so forceful about the only truthful thing that had ever been said so far in this interview that we've watched. I'll play it again for you guys after we're done. There's only a couple minutes, but I wanted to break it down. We're breaking it down. And then I'll play the whole thing for you guys uh, uninterrupted because I'm sure some of y'all want to take uh, a recording or whatever. Um, and here is the link to the article uh, for you to go on your own. It's You might be selected too. 99 cents for a month. Special prize. Who's doing what? JD. Who's JD? Oh. Oh, JP, JD is telling JP. Because really, that's the worst I've ever heard him. That's the worst I've ever heard him talk about Micah. Is just when she's not on her mids. 
I get this and I get broken nose and chipped tooth and hit in the ear where my ear, my hearing goes out for six hours. I can't imagine. And this is what he's telling. This is what he's telling uh, the Sun News. I can't imagine what he's telling people that are like in the back office. It's got to be like a dumbed down version. The worst he's ever said. You're welcome, you guys. Oh, the question is, did I ever hit or harm Micah? So not once, ever, ever, ever in any way, in any way was she harmed by me or hit by me. Ever, 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 ever. One time in Disneyland, I think I knocked a drink um, that she was holding off. But that's the closest we ever come. Now, when she's off her meds, she's knocked the crap out of me a few times. Um, chipped my tooth, busted my nose, uh, hit me so hard in my ear, it rang for six hours and I lost hearing. But that's when she's off meds. Smiling like, and, about and you it. Just take care. It's like an autistic child. When someone you love can't control themselves, uh, you don't really know what to do. Do you hug them really hard and prevent them from moving their hands? Do you run in the other room? Always itching his I'll nose. I'll just kind of run away. You know, I'd leave the house. Or I'd look around, look around, look around, look talk, around. You know, talk her into understanding what's going on and who I am. And Look around, look around, look around. She has never been harmed by me in any way, ever at all. She has only been loved and cared for, I think, better than any man on earth could have ever loved and cared for a woman. Wow. Wow. The goal is for her to take her medicine, and the goal is also to prevent her from getting a gun. And so having the, the tracker by the PI was like, it, it could help us prevent the gun, but if she, she keeps getting upset, so she's not going to trust us and take her he medicine. He admits the so tracker. We didn't, we didn't know what to do. And so Again, I was encouraged by my spiritual advisor to stop doing the private eye. He met he he admits to the tracker again. He said before he admitted it before. Then he said she was doing it to me. I never did those things to her. Now he admits to doing it again because when he admitted it the first time, he said I told him I didn't put a tracker on her vehicle, but I told him to call me as soon as she was going to a gun store. What? He's there you go. Yeah. He just admitted it again. He had a tracker on her and the PI. Back and forth, back and forth. What signs of instability did you see? Oh boy, here we go. Right. Admits to it, then denied it, then denied it, and then admits it again. Yikes. I was finding her uh, following me. Um, a lot uh, before she passed okay. and I would videotape different times I, I was at a gas station once and I look over and she's driving a different car hiding in a car you know videotaping me and stuff and she would think two things that there are many things but two things that were always consistent whenever she came off her meds is she would use the word um, paper trail and she would use the word um, <laughs> um, double agent and she would think that I was a double agent from England many times, and she would need what? a paper trail to prove who she is and to prove who I am. She wanted a paper trail because she's already collecting information, and you probably told people that you were a double agent from England. <laughs> right. James Bond. <laughs> what the hell? It's like it's like in the in the eighties, you know, in the eighties, even movies would make fun of it. In the eighties, guys would be walking around, yeah, I work for the CIA <laughs> at a bar or something. I work for a CIA. Let me tell you some stories. I work for the <laughs> FBI. Like, let me oh, tell no. you some stories, right? <laughs> She thought that's probably what you were telling the waitress at the fucking restaurant that you were trying to get cookies from, right? I'm, I'm really, really a double agent from Britain. <laughs> like, come on, man. Oh, oh my goodness. No. Some of the shit he says, yeah, call me Bond, James Bond. Like some of the stuff he says is just like, what, bro? What? Yeah. Bro? Sorry, Rachel, that this isn't part of your show, but trust me, there's plenty of other shows on YouTube that you can go enjoy. So thank you for coming in, and thank you for your time, and enjoy another show. 
Appreciate you. Death took off like it did nationally on social media because America, at least most of America, the ones that have the loudest voices are usually people like uh, that like Jerry Springer show. And Micah's family is the epitome of the Jerry Springer show. Wow. The people who were saying justice for Micah yeah. are raising money for the people who caused Micah's death. What? They're using the money what? to sue the man who kept her alive for seven years and did everything he could to help her. Why are you sure. looking down? Why are you looking down? I don't even get that. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> I need somebody to explain that to me. What the hell? All I can think of is there's evil in the world. That's all. That's Look all at him. All we have is that Satan is at work in the world. What the hell? That is, dude, the number one, the most, the worst response I've ever heard you talk about, Micah. And then when you're talking about the justice for Micah, you're like mm -hmm. talking about how the justice for Micah protest is helping the family. The family that helped is suing a man that tried to help her for seven years. And they're a Jerry Springer episode. Yo, th this response was crazy. Not only the words, but the way he was moving. Right. He has not moved this way the whole time. Yeah, he was squirming. Whoa. It obviously bothers him because he started doing all this shit, moving around, get, you know, all this. He's obviously really bothered by it. Yeah. And look at how he's like looking down. Like, I haven't seen you look that far down this whole interview. And now all of a sudden you're like looking at your shoelaces and stuff. You're looking so far down. I'm going to play it one more time. Whoa. This one's crazy. Micah's death took off like it did nationally on social media because America, at least most of America, the ones that have the loudest voices are usually people like uh, that like Jerry Springer show. So I and Micah's family is the epitome of the Jerry Springer show. Well, not uh, not here. You don't get Jerry Springer. We we are there for the protest. The people who were saying justice for Micah are raising money for the people who caused Micah's death. They're using the money to sue the man who kept her alive for seven years and did everything he could to help her. Oh, look at his face. And he's getting sure. red. I don't even get that. I, oh, I, I, he's I, getting I, red. I, 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 don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> I need look to at him. That to me. Wow. All I can think of is there's evil in the world. That's all that's all all we have to have is that Satan is at work in the world. He was freaking bothered as hell. You saw his face getting redder. He's moving around. He's keep doing mm -hmm. this. <laughs> a, a, a nervous laugh. Oh, hold on a minute. One more time. People like uh that like Jerry Springer show. And she would think that I was a double agent from England many times, and she would need a paper trail to prove who she is. Look at her face now is. and watch his face towards the end. It gets so red. Watch. Michael's and he's death took off like it did nationally on social media because or after this, America, look at, at his face America, some more. The ones that have the loudest voices are usually people like uh, that, like Jerry Springer show. And Micah's family look at his body movement, his Springer calmness. Show. Watch this. Whoa. The people who were saying Justice Look at him. are raising money for the people who caused Micah's death. See all the red right They're here? using the money to sue the man who kept her alive for seven years and did everything he could his to help His neck? Him. And his church. I don't Look at how red his neck is. I don't understand. Look at how red his neck is. Explain that to me. All I can think of is there's evil in the world. That's all. That's all, all we have to have is that Satan is at work in the world. Dude, wow. even his neck was getting red. Yeah. Ooh! Wow. So he even sits up straight for the first time and then it... Wow. All right. What do you think about that one, Rosie? That was I... a lot. The <laughs> was... body just said a whole lot right there. I'm kind of speechless. I mean... Not, yeah, I mean, not even what he was saying, but 
I don't think I've ever seen him. I mean, I've been watching his sermons a lot. I don't think I've ever seen him so uncomfortable ever. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yeah. You guys wrote some interesting comments in there. Again, E.T. said CJJP said to me on the phone he had to hang up because he was getting a call from England. Special agent man. Unapologetically me. Is that one of his personality double agent? <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Busby says he said every day for three months, but he said seven years. Question mark, question mark. This is a man grieving for his wife, attacks her character, attacks the people she loved, protects his own reputation. Yep, he's grieving. Right, E.T.? Bo Rivers, why not go to her own doc that supposedly prescribed these meds for seven years? He had POA. The doc has to talk to him about his wife's, quote, illness. That is true. And when it comes to the people that were connected you know the mental health facility the people that could make sure that she got this medicine that he thought she needed um there's a reason and that's why i was asking a long time ago i wonder if that's a tactic that they use with spouses because there's other stories that we've heard of people that have gone there that they created a wedge between the wife and the husband. You know, they created a wedge. Oh, she's not holy enough. She can't she can't be part of our group singing. She's not holy enough, Billy. You need to make sure your wife is holier before she can be allowed to come sing up on the stage. Stuff like that. So it makes you wonder. Was this thing that happened with Micah put on center stage because of who Micah was and it wasn't really discussed before because something like this didn't take place where somebody ended up passing? I bet when you hear a lot of these stories from these old church members and there's others that we're going to go into in the future, when you hear some that we've already went into, it's all that wedge. One of them isn't holy. You need to make them holy. Usually it's the females because, you know, of how the male dominance is preached. Uh, you know, usually it's the females, the wives, yeah. you know, that are going through these things. So it makes you wonder, is this like a, hey, you better call Dr. Rose, you know, better call Dr. Rose. She'll, she'll help you out. She'll help your wife get better. Help her help her be more holy. Carol, Steph, the only time he shows emotion is when... And that's true, too. The only time he tried to show emotion was when he was saying, I never hit her. That's it. The other emotion was when he was getting so upset when he was talking about the hashtag Justice for Micah protest and what we're doing. Vicious pagans make you that angry.